Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. We got a pretty cool build today. We have a Hot Wheels Sea Cider. Now, this was introduced in 1970, and it was only produced in the United States. It had a two year run, and it's a pretty cool truck, pickup, like an El Camino type thing, but uh, it's really cool. And um, we're going to restore it today. Now, missing from this is the boat that goes in the back, but we do have a replacement for that. And we're going to restore it to the original color, the antifreeze. It's um, a pretty cool casting, and I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't owned one before, so this is my first Seasider. But we're going to have a lot of fun restoring it to its original condition. So let's go ahead and get started and have some fun. Grab your favorite adult beverage and join in. Here I've already got the post drilled apart. We'll work it apart there. Now the motor in the front is the post. And there's a very small post in the back. I mean super small. As you can see there. Super, super tiny. So you got to be careful with that when you're drilling it out. I also recommend here that you use the 1-72 screws and the 1 16th inch bit in order to put this back together. Windshield's in pretty good shape. We just have to polish that up and clean it. Use it, dip it in the gauzy. Interior's in good shape. We just got to clean that up with some soapy water and a toothbrush. Engine needs to be cleaned up, and that's an incredibly narrow post. It's got the dual exhaust on this bad boy. Now, earlier models had the single exhaust, but that was quickly replaced. The bottom of it is pretty tarnished, so we're going to have to take care of that, and we'll have to do some detailing. Let's go ahead and take the body and get the paint off of it. Here we're going to dip it in the embalming fluid, get it coated up really well, and then we'll set it on the tray. Now, I just started recently using this tray and I like it a little bit better because it shows me what cars I have with paint stripper on them and if I can look at it and physically see that it's stripped out then I get to it a lot faster. Here we're going to be using the Spectre Flame Antifreeze paint from the Redline shop. Now using the lighter colors when you're using the Spectre Flame paint like your antifreeze or your hot pink your very light green, you've got to be careful when you're using those paints because as you're spraying it on, the color is going on very, very light. And by the time you happen to see the color, you've already sprayed on a lot of paint. And where I'm leading to with this is if you put down too much paint, you're going to get a lot of runs in the paint. <laughs> Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell to be alerted to any future videos that come out. So anyways, back to the paint. By the time you start to see the color, you've already put down a large amount of paint. So you've got to put it on in light layers. So make sure that you put on that, that mist coat or that tack coat. And then you're going to let it set for about 10 to 15 minutes. The, of course, the longer you can wait, the better. But I know you've already got paint mixed up and ready in your gun. So 10 to 15 minutes should be a good, a good number to hit. Now we've let it set for about 10 or 15 minutes. And we're going to come back in and put some more paint on it. Keep putting the light coats on there and gradually building it up. And then you won't get any runs. Antifreeze is a really cool color. But again you have to put light coats on in order for it to go on properly. I'm liking where this is headed. This is starting to look really good. Put on some light coats in the areas there, that in the underside, the areas that are hard to reach. And again, just keep building it up as you go. This is looking pretty good. We'll let it set for a while, maybe give it a, one more coat, and then we'll continue on. We've let the car set for approximately 24 hours, and now we're going to paint the bottom half of the car in Spectre Flame Black, or actually Opaque Black, from the Redline shop. 
got it taped off really good take your time again and put on light coats because you don't want the paint to saturate and get up underneath the tape that you've laid down so by putting light coats you're sealing the edge of the tape before you put the rest of the paint on now the other thing you need to be aware of here is underneath you'll notice that the underneath or the bottom side there is taped up you don't want paint to spray up into your car and get in through the windows and overspray onto the rest of your paint job so you got to block that off or you're going to do that okay so please be careful with that we pulled the tape off and this is how it looks that turned out pretty good I'm happy with that this is going to turn out pretty sweet here we've got the body or the base in a mixture of lime away and water a 50 50 mixture and we're going to let that set for a bit no more than three and a half minutes to four at the most a little later let's go ahead and speed up the video here notice the bristles from my brass brush that fell apart because i had it a little bit too long so i went ahead and replaced it after this video this is sped up five times pretty cool that's been about three minutes let's take it out now and get a new brass brush and let's scrub it down this won't take long at all it just had a little bit of tarnish on there but we definitely needed to clean it up and address it this is looking pretty good I think we've used this lime away in water long enough we'll have to put some new stuff in there and rotate it out let's go ahead and move on we got the base out of the lime away in water now we're going to go ahead and buff it up now here I'm using flitz flitz is an excellent product here and you only need a little bit and it comes in a cream so put it on there spread it out and then get your your brush or your your Dremel or whatever you're using and polish it out I went ahead obviously and sped this up too but it doesn't take long for that flitz polish to work it's a fantastic product I'm gonna be doing a little bit more with flitz as time permits and we're gonna have a really cool video with their product being featured looking good let's move on here we're going to replace the wheels we got these wheels at the redline shop and folks the redline shop has everything you need to restore your old red lines back to life here we're going to replace the tires now taking the blade of your knife go ahead and run it over to the edge till you hit that little lip wiggle it in place give it a twist it'll pop that wheel right off that's looking good move it over push it in give it a twist now the cap style wheels only come in two sizes larges and mediums so we got two large meats for the back and two medium meats for the front and they snap right in place these reproduction wheels from the Redline shop are fantastic and I recommend them highly. Nice. There's your old one and there's your new one. Nothing beats a car with brand new tires on it. So check out the Redline shop at www.redlineshop.com. Check out everything they got to offer, a lot of fantastic products. Let's move on. Here we've got the windshield. We're going to use Meguiar's Plastex to polish it up, and then we're going to dip it into the gauzy. Just a little bit of the polish is all you need. Rub it on a cloth, wipe it on down, and just start rubbing it with your clean cloth and rub it down and smooth it out. Looking good. Okay. 
The Plastex polish did a great job. Now you need to make sure that you get all that polish off before you use the gauzy because the polish will repel it and just wipe it down really super good. Go ahead and mix it up by turning it over and over like you saw me do there, but slowly because it'll get a bunch of bubbles in it. Take your tweezers, dip your windshield in the gauzy, let it drip off a little bit, and then touch it to a paper towel like you see me doing here, and you're taking away all that excess gauzy, or as we say, wicking it away. Just about ready. Now once you got it on your platform, close up your gauzy so you don't spill it. Hey, does that sound like the voice of experience? Good product. And so is the Plastex. Now you can get these products on my Amazon Marketplace page and there's a link in the comments. Now cover up your windshield so it doesn't get any dust on there and put it away. I love how the moonlight shines over the mausoleum. <laughs> Here we've got all of our pieces. We got the body with that Spectre Flame antifreeze and this and the Spectre Flame black on the bottom. We've got the base that has been all polished up using the flits and the brand new wheels from the Redline shop. We got the windshield that was cleaned up with the Meguiar's Plastex and dipped in gauzy. Interior was cleaned with a toothbrush and soapy water, and here's your engine. Now I did blow out the post on the engine. Remember I told you that they're very, very narrow. Well, I make mistakes too, but I wanted you to see what I did there. Here's a reproduction boat that we're going to put in the back end. Now let's put it all together and have our reveal. And here's what we started with. This Hot Wheels Seasider that was produced in 1970. And again, they were only produced in the United States. Now the color, the antifreeze is really cool. It's actually a yellow, but I went with the antifreeze anyways. We got the detailing in the front we had to do. We replaced the tires with brand new meats from the Redline shop. We polished up the windshield, got that cleaned up using the Meguiar's Plastex polish and the gauzy and we cleaned up the engine and put it all back together. I was pretty happy with this restoration because like I said I've never owned a Seasider and I've waited a long time to get one. So this restoration is going to be incredibly cool and without further delay let's go ahead and see the results of our restoration. And here's what we got to. Look at that beautiful paint job with the Spectre Flame paint from the Redline shop. We detailed the front, we detailed the engine, brand new meats all the way around, that antifreeze color, that reproduction boat which I got off of eBay. That looks fantastic. Now you can get those boats at the Redline shop too. I just for some reason I had ordered one of these a long time ago and I had it sitting around. But everything on this car looks fantastic. I'm really looking forward to putting this in my collection. I'm starting to get a pretty darn good collection together too. But you guys can do this also. If you have any questions please leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Now I do read all the comments but if like I said if you got a question and you need some help with it please let me know. Now let's talk about Patreon. Join the team. You'll be helping the channel by helping with supplies. What you receive in return, you'll see videos at least a day or more in advance. You'll get personal advice for your own diecast hobby. I'll be available for video one-on-one -on -one help. We do prize drawings once a month. Exclusive customs offers only available to members and many more offers. I'd like to take this time and thank my current subscribers. Grim Reaper level, William K7 Robinson, Dale Johnson, and new member, Matt Miller. Thank you so much, sir. Jake Rademacher, Ray Berger, Air Warrior Coffee Company, 
Ricky Montalvo, Jason Warren, and Sam Pascal on the mortician level. Funeral Director, Double B's Customs, check out his YouTube page. Diecast Sheriff, check out his YouTube page. Dave Christensen and Ryan Goldstein. Gravedigger Level, Aaron Murphy, Leroy, Andrew Hitchens, John Sellers, check out his YouTube page, Phenomenal Builder, Bob DeNice, Les Jenkins, Trevor DeViz, Grizz Flowers, check out BearcatThreeDDesigns.com for 3D printing, great artist, Chris Decker, Keith Kripe, Johnny Hicks and his son William, Stacy Wright, Richie Ramos, Michael Oxley, and John Homan. Gravedigger level. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your generosity. Paul Bearer level. Gary Tasker, Daryl Begtel, and Milesium 487. Brand new member. Thank you so much, sir. Hearst driver level. Jim Silva. Check out his YouTube page. Richard over at Michio Woods Garage on Facebook. He sells a lot of Hot Wheels. Check him out. Somo Diecast. New YouTube page. Check him out. Good stuff. Tony Hughes over in the UK. Wade Hendricks, Stephen Terrence, Diecast Pirate, Pin Tony, Scott Turner, Pete Langford, Joe Pierce, Adam Bowen, Richard Reese, and new member Jason Saylor. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your generosity. I can't thank you enough. Thank you for following my videos on YouTube. Join the team today. You'll definitely be helping me out. The link is in the comments. I would love to have you as a Patreon team member. Again, thank you so much. This video was brought to you by the Redline Shop. The Redline Shop offers a complete line of decals, tools to take your car apart, put them back together, replacement hoods, replacement glass, those beautiful Redline tires, and of course, the world famous Spectre Flame paints. Fantastic products. The Redline Shop at www.redlineshop.com, where redlines come to life. Thank you for joining me on Diecast Graveyard today. We got a lot of things coming up. We got a lot of build-offs, a lot more builds that I'm working on for videos. We've got the, the Halloween hearse build-off coming up and a bunch of other things. And we got the Christmas season coming up too, so we're going to be extremely busy. Now, for you folks that are still watching the video, we're going to have a die-cast workshop, and there'll be more information on that soon. If you're interested, contact me. Cheers, and thank you again for joining me on Diecast Graveyard. Y'all have a great day.